All righty. So welcome to this week's Waterloo Wednesday webinar. Today is April 20th, uh, 2022. And today we'll be discussing campus housing and residents at the University of Waterloo. Uh, so residents are an essential service and have been open to students on campus throughout the pandemic. And our staff have worked extremely hard to ensure our students have had a safe and enjoyable experience. If you're thinking about studying with us at Waterloo, we strongly recommend you consider living with us on campus to add that overall university experience, which we'll talk about in just a bit. If you would like to have captions um, on during the webinar, they can be turned on through your individual devices by clicking the three dots on um, your menu or the CC button at the bottom right of your screen. Once you select that, the captions will appear on the screen. So our Q&A is now open. So if you have any questions throughout the webinar, please feel free to submit those and our team of recruitment staff and admissions officers um, are here to answer as we go. Uh, we also have additional student ambassadors um, in, uh, in the Q&A. So um, if you're looking to hear more, just send them a question. Um, we'll, we'll also have time to address some of those frequently asked questions during our Q&A time at the end of the webinar today. And of course, if you have any questions later on, feel free to email them at liaison at uwaterloo.ca. So we're also we, uh, recording today's webinar and it'll be available on our YouTube um, forward slash experience Waterloo next week. So just stay tuned for that. So allow me to quickly introduce myself. My name is Maggie. I go by she, her pronouns, and I'm a um, uh, I am an in undergraduate recruitment specialist for the University of Waterloo. I also just finished my last term of honor science and I'll be one of your hosts today. So I'll pass it on to my co-host Bailey for her introduction. Hello everyone, my name is Bailey. Uh, my pronouns are she, her. I'm a student ambassador and uh, like Maggie, I actually just finished my last term of the public health program at Waterloo. And like she said, I'll be one of your co-hosts today. Um, before we get too far into it, I'd just like to do a bit of a territorial acknowledgement. So the University of Waterloo acknowledges that we do live, work, and study on the traditional territory of the neutral Anishinaabek and Haudenosaunee people. The University of Waterloo is situated on the Haldeman Tract, the land granted in legally binding treaty to the six nations that include six miles on each side of the Grand River. Although we've gathered remotely today, I hope that you will also take time to respect and acknowledge the traditional territories that you are currently located on as well. Across campus, we are engaged in active work on reconciliation through our research, teaching, learning, and community building. Much of that is centered through our Office of Indigenous Relations. So in just a moment, we'll share with you some ways you can stay connected with us at Waterloo and how, we'll, and how to visit. We'll share our story of the week and uh, then the agenda. Uh, following that, we'll have our weekly quiz. That's your chance to win a Warrior, Waterloo Warriors hoodie by answering the quiz questions correctly and the fastest. So stay tuned for that. And we'll end the webinar today with a Q&A using your questions. So first, stay connected with us. Uh, the virtual campus tours continue for those who would like to tour Waterloo from the comfort of your home um, while still connecting with student ambassadors like me and getting your questions answered. However, if you are able to make the trip, uh, we welcome you back to campus for our in-person tours. You will need to sign up for those in advance, but checking out campus is definitely one of the best ways to get a sense for what life is like at Waterloo. You can find information for both virtual and in-person tours from the tour and events webpage. If you haven't got, got one, make sure you get Waterloo View Book or Faculty Program brochures. You can download these instantly, or if you leave your address, we'll send you these right to your door for free. Uh, you can find the brochure request form on our website, and I think both of those links I mentioned will be in the chat as well. Um, of course, there's a ton of helpful information that we couldn't get all into this brochure, so that's where the missing manual comes in. Uh, everything you want to know that you won't find from our brochures is found on that great website. It's how to choose a program, meet people, decide on residents. It's all in there, written by students, so I really encourage you to check that out. Uh, and if you think of any questions later on, please feel free to email us at liaison at uwaterloo.ca. So with that out of the way, I'll pass it back to Maggie for the story of the week. All right. All right. Thank you, Bailey. So for the story of the week, so many view uh, the first Earth Day as the beginning of the modern environmental movement. In advance of Earth Day 2022, on April 22nd of this year, 
Sarah Birch, uh, a professor at the University of Waterloo and Canada Research Chair in Sustainability Governance um, and Innovation, discusses its relevance more than 50 years on. In the Q&A session, she states, what I appreciate about our conversation today um, is that we're starting to talk about all the important ways that climate change and other environmental problems like, uh, like it are not simply environmental problems, they are people problems. Earth Day gives us a uh, pause to think about how much a part of nature humans really are and to re-examine our relationship with nature. So according to the uh, Intergovernmental Panel on Climate Change Report, in which Professor Birch is a lead author of, she further states the IPCC tells us that individuals and individual choice control 40 to 70 percent of our greenhouse gas emissions. But the report concludes that in many ways our hands are tied as individuals. So it's actually collective decisions that are uh, made by governments at all levels that unshackle us from the hard, um, high carbon pathways and allow us to unleash the potential of individual choice. So we hope that with Earth Day coming up, it reminds us all to live more sustainably and uh, be mindful of how we're treating the environment around us. So with that, so now we'll move on to introduce our guest speakers for today. So. Hi everyone. I'm Christy McDonald. Um, I'm the marketing specialist with Campus Housing. So I oversee all the marketing strategy and events within housing, um, you know, reviewing website, communications, that sort of thing. Um, I was a marketing and political science um, major as well. Nice to meet you. Hi everyone. Hi, um, my name is Katie. I'm in my 1B term of planning at the University of Waterloo and my current roles are being a residence ambassador for campus housing. So I do tours and I also make content and I'm also a part time worker at food services and I chose to stay at Waterloo because I thought it would help me pursue my goal of being a city planner. All right. Well, thank you so much for joining us uh, today, Christine and Katie. Both Maggie and I live in residence and had lived in residence and had really great experiences. So we always encourage students to consider uh, doing the same. And we're uh, looking forward to hearing more about Waterloo's options today. To start off, I would like to make a quick note for students coming into our architecture program. Um, since that program is based out of our Cambridge campus, many students live in private residences surrounding the campus there. You can use our department's off-campus housing website to view options, which we'll post for you in the Q&A and you will also be provided with a list of local landlords at an upcoming architecture event, so stay tuned for that information. You can also email Nicole at uh, archinfo at uwaterloo.ca if you have any questions. So with that out of the way, Christine, before we talk about the different residence options at Waterloo, why should a student consider living on campus in residence, especially in their first year? Yeah, so um, choosing to live on campus can ease the transition to university life. So living on campus means you'll be more plugged into the campus community and have more opportunities to join clubs, uh, attend campus events, meet new people, and develop friendships. So uh, living on campus, we're gonna say, provide students with the most unique living experience possible. Also, studies have shown that students who live on campus tend to complete um, more credit hours and have higher grade point averages. They become more involved with campus community. Um, they, they sh it shows that they've complete their degree at their initial institution. They're more likely to. Um, and then there's also greater gains in student development and interpersonal self-esteem. So um, overall, the easy access to campus resources provides um, a much better quality of life within someone's first year. So that could be access to libraries, labs, athletic facilities, and um, like our the extensive uh, support services that we offer as well. OK, thank you. Um, so the University College residence communities are open to all wa uh, Waterloo students, regardless of your academic program. So make sure you look into those as well. Uh, so just as a refresher, there are four University Colleges. 
So Renison, St. Paul's and St. Jerome's are all included in our first year uh, residence guarantee, which Christine will uh, tell us more about in just a moment. Um, but just a quick note, uh, Conrad Grebel, uh, one of the last of our four university colleges, um, are is not included in the guarantee because they have a separate residence application process and we'll include a little bit more information about that in the announcements as well. So as for the main campus housing and residence options, what does uh, Waterloo offer? So um, first off, the University of Waterloo offers a first year residence guarantee to all of our first year students as well as transfer students. Um, in addition to that, uh, we're able to guarantee that because we have over 6,000 beds uh, across campus housing and the university colleges. We're actually the third largest housing organization in Canada. Uh, campus housing offers seven different residence communities and the university colleges has four. Um, we also have space for upper grads, exchange students and families. Um, there's lots of work opportunities in campus housing, which is a really big benefit when you're coming to live with us and it's a great way to get involved and to uh, make you some money. Okay, so looking more into the different types of residence options now. Um, so what are the traditional style of residences and what should students know um, about it when looking into them? So we have three traditional style residences uh, being V1, Village 1, Rev Ronite Village and Claudette Miller Hall. And inside traditional style residences, you'll usually find a single or double room, uh, gender neutral bathrooms, common rooms, study rooms, study lounges, gyms and eateries. Uh, traditional residences really allow you to develop strong bonds with your other floor mates that you're living with. And while living in a traditional style of residence, you are required to buy a meal plan. We do have three meal plan options. We have light, average and hearty meal plans. And we also have dietary accommodations such as uh, gluten free, uh, vegetarian, vegan, halal as well. Thanks Katie for that information. That was a really great summary. I know I lived in traditional and I had a great time. Um, but with that being said, can you tell us a little bit about the suite or apartment style residences at Waterloo? So we have a suite or apartment style residences at CLV, uh, Columbia Lake Village, uh, MKV, Mackenzie King Village and UW Place. Suite style residences are like apartments. So there'll be two to four bedrooms within each unit and one bathroom uh, per two students. There's also a kitchenette there with a stove and other appliances that students can use, such as a full uh, full sized fridge. There's also tables, chairs and like a uh, lounge slash sitting area for students to hang out with their floor mates as well. Meal plans are optional in suite style residences. However, we do recommend that first year students uh, do get meal plan, um, do get meal plans. And if you want to find out more about our different residences, um, suite style or traditional style, we do have images on the campus housing webpage as well. Okay, thanks for that, Katie. Um, so you mentioned uh, roommates already, but could you expand a little bit more on how room assignments work and if floors are single or mixed gender or gender neutral? Yeah, sure, I can touch on that. Um, so following the first year residence guarantee application form, you'll be sent the campus housing preference form in June of 2022. So in this form, you will rank your preferred buildings and let us know if you would like to live, uh, if you like to request a roommate. If you have a roommate in mind, it must be for the same stream. So that is the four stream or the eight stream. The four stream is a, there a four month period in residence and an eight stream is an eight month period in residence. Applying for, if you're all applying for the same term, um, you would have to have the, the, your requested roommate um, submit the application together. So that would mean on your requested, on your roommate request, you'd have to have that person's name and the other person in mind would have to have your name. Um, if one person was missing uh, a name or it wasn't put on, you would not be put together. 
um, all individual in terms of um, uh, gendered bathrooms, all individual first year rooms and apartments are single gender. However, each floor or house may be a single or a mixed gender. Um, washrooms are always single gendered. Um, if you are, if you have an undisclosed or uh, gender, or your gender is unspecified on your application, you should reach out to ResLife um, and they will work with you um, to understand your needs and to find a space that best suits you. So um, if you do have spe special requests for this, uh, you can let us know within your first year residence application or first year guarantee residence application um, and please do so before the June 1st deadline. Thanks, Christine. That was really that was really informative. Um, I feel like another aspect of residence that is really important to us all is food. Um, I know we talk about food a lot in these webinars, and so Katie, I, I'm going to ask you: Could you tell us about the food options available in residence and throughout campus? Uh, we've heard students in suite style residence will have kitchens in their units, but otherwise, what are the meal plans for students in traditional style, and what do students usually say about the food? Yeah. So both uh, campus housing and the university pride ourselves on being able to serve fresh, house-made, uh, very delicious food cooked by uh, Red Seal certified chefs and cooks. And campus housing and food services really work closely together to meet the community's needs and provide very nutritious food for students as well. We also have a registered dietitian there, a reg registered dietitian on staff to really help students make informed and healthy choices about the food and meals that they would like to eat. Uh, UW Food Services also has many dietary accommodations. I know I mentioned this a little bit earlier, but I'll just mention it again here as well. We have gluten-free, halal, vegan, vegetarian options, but if you do have more dietary accommodations, there's also a form on campus housing which you can sign and fill out which will notify food services and campus housing as well of your dietary needs. We are not an allergy free facility, so it's really imperative that students with allergies identify themselves to campus housing and food services. So that way uh, food services can work really closely and really meet the dietary needs or accommodations of the student and create a delicious dining experience for you as well. We also have locally sourced food and from my personal perspective, the food here is really great. Uh, one of my favorite places to go is Booster Juice in CMH, which I usually get very frequently. So yeah. All right, yeah, I will agree. When I was in first year, I got a lot of Booster Juice as well. So that's always a bonus. Food. So just in general, what are the costs of living in residence? Is it comparable to living off campus? And when should students expect to pay uh, residence fees? So uh, we, we, are, we try and be as transparent as possible with our fees and we're constantly updating them on the Campus Housing website. So they're actually listed for fall. Um, 2022. This is just a snapshot, but we do have um, a complete listing for all types of room scenarios and all types of residence communities on our website. You can find them on the University College's website as well. Uh, the thing with campus housing is um, it is all inclusive living, so there's no worries during your time with us, and you also don't have to worry about signing a lease, landlords, or subletting your room while you're away from school. So rent is increasing in the Waterloo area for off-campus housing and um, campus housing has actually become a very valuable option. Uh, students are expected to pay their residence fees prior to moving in and you'll be prompted to do so um, throughout the app or throughout the, the onboarding process, I should say, um, come September. So residence fees include a fully furnished room, uh, all your utilities, 24 hour security and uh, front desk assistance. We offer high speed unlimited internet. Um, there's an option for cable TV in some areas. There's on site laundry and eateries in each of the traditional dormitories. Um, your, your residence costs also include residence life programming, which includes tutoring and a counselor in residence. Uh, we also have on-call maintenance. If there's any issues um, 
with amenities or facilities. There are housekeeping services as well um, and access to all other amenities such as gyms. We have music rooms. There are multi-faith rooms. Uh, the, the list is endless. So um, we do find it a very valuable option compared to the increasing rent costs in the Waterloo region. And Christine, I was wondering if you could speak on that uh, deposit that's required by June 1st. Um, we've had students wondering about what happens if they opt out of residence after their first term, as well as students wondering about moving into residence in their second term. Um, I'm just wondering if you could speak to whether those are possibilities. Yeah, so through with your the first year guarantee residence application form that's due June 1st, um, part of that application and part of submitting it and completing it is submitting a $500 non-refundable deposit. So this $500 deposit is what guarantees you a spot in residence. Um, if you choose to opt out of residence after June 1st, unfortunately, you will not get your deposit back. Um, I just want to stress again that um, part of the deposit is part of the completion process to your application, which needs to be done by June 1st, uh, 2022 this year. Um, if it's not done and say like it missed, it slipped your mind or something, um, you didn't have access, you are still able to apply for a campus or for housing within the University of Waterloo. However, it won't be guaranteed. So the thing of importance with that deposit is that it guarantees you a spot, it guarantees you a bed. Did that answer your question, Bailey? It did, thank you. Alrighty, so if students require accommodations or perhaps a service animal, what should they uh, be considering or doing right now in order to um, have those opportunities? Yep, so this also falls in line with your first year guarantee residence application. You will have to apply for um, accessible housing within this application, letting us know between June 1st. It's really important to do this um, before June 1st because after we start assigning rooms um, and say we, we, we were unaware of certain um, requirements that you might need, um, you might have been placed in a room, it could, could be very difficult to, to change you over. Um, so leading up to June 1st, if you could get together all required documents, this could be medical notes or doctor's forms, um, anything that, that would verify um, your housing requests, um, that would have to be submitted through accessible housing um, and you'd have to let us know within your first year guarantee residence application form. You could uh, I also a note, um, if you have any questions, you can email um, housing at uwaterloo.ca and you can also contact um, accessibility services with the University of Waterloo uh, with any questions or requests. All right, thanks, Christine. Um, so switching gears a little bit, I'm going to ask Katie. Um, a few weeks ago, we heard a little bit about living learning communities when we had um, a student panel. Could you let us know more about what these are and how they work? Definitely. So living learning communities are residence communities that allow students to meet with other students within their own program or faculty. Living learning, a living learning communities really enhance a student's academic and social experience while living in residence. Some examples of activities that are done in living learning communities involve uh, upper year Q and A's, one on one goal setting with their peer leader, uh, study sessions, de stress events, faculty meet and greets, or community building events, and even career planning. Currently, uh, living learning communities with in campus housing are found in arts and business. Uh, global Business and Digital Arts, Public Health and Sciences, uh, Kinesiology and Health Sciences, uh, Recreation and Leisure Studies, and also we uh, also Science, which used to be a former academic cluster, but it's also open to first years with entering the Faculty of Science. So if you're interested in participating or being a part of a living learning community, when you uh, fill in your first year guarantee residence application, you can indicate your interest in being part of a living learning community on there. How it typically works is that you'll be placed in a cluster of approximately 12 students uh, within your own faculty, and usually the rest of your floor mates will be from a variety of other programs, so you can also interact with other students that aren't a part of your program as well. 
They also host online and in-person events, and there's no mandatory time requirements in living learning communities as well. OK, thank you. So um, perhaps the real connection a residence is going to make is with their residence, Don. Um, that supportive, always there when you need them, upper year student. So um, can you tell us more about um, Don's and why they're such an important part of residence communities? Yeah, I can do that. So um, Dons are upper years that live with you in residence. They live on your floor um, and they have firsthand experience of the highs and lows of university life. So uh, Dons are also trained in emergency first aid and mental health crisis response. Um, you can talk to your Don if you need support transitioning to campus life or um, university life. If you need any emergency assistance, including uh, mental health for yourself or even for a friend, um, you can also go to them if you need help meeting other people in the community, um, if you want to learn about different social events, um, how to get involved, that sort of thing. They're, they're a great source of information. Um, they're there to support you and your needs, um, and they're there to get you through your first year. So you can talk to your Don by knocking on their door or finding them at a community event. And I think maybe I'll pass this question to Katie. Um, what other supports can students access in uh, residence? Yeah, so I think Christine already briefly mentioned this, but Res Life staff have already been trained in crisis and emergency situations. So it really creates a safe and friendly and open environment for students to go to. Food services also has lots of accommodations and they're uh, really, re uh, really willing to work with students and meet all of their dietary accommodations. We also have residence life counselors who help maintain students' well-being and health, and they're great people to talk to as well, so feel free to say hi to them while you're living in residence. Uh, Dons and peer leaders as well really contribute to your experience at residence. Some fond memories I have of what my Dons did for me and my other floor mates include Easter egg hunts. I just managed to find two. <laughs> Apparently there were 70 in total. Uh, Bob Ross painting nights, arts and crafts, as well as some other stress relieving activities that your Don can usually organize. And if you do want to uh, organize an activity with your floor mates, you can always ask your Don about it and they will always be a very uh, happy to help you with any questions or or give you any advice on anything that you might need. Residents also provides uh, drop in tutoring sessions and workshops for students who might want to develop, let's say, their academic, social or leadership skills. Okay, so are there any uh, ways that students can get involved while in residence? Uh, can you tell us more about residence life programming and some different leadership positions students can be a part of? Yeah. So something that I really recommend for trying to figure out what type of opportunities and leadership um, jobs are available while living on residence is to always keep updated on UW campus housing social media platforms. For instance, I found out about being a residence ambassador through always keeping updated on the uh, campus housing web portal, which led me to uh, helping out with Waterloo Wednesday, which I'm really thankful for. Typically what you can find for campus housing or residence postings involves leadership positions, um, such as Dons, team leaders, residence engagement leaders, uh, or front desk assistants. But something to note is when you're applying for leadership positions while living in residence, you should always check the requirements and also check the deadlines for when they're due. Awesome, thanks Katie. Um, so when I lived in residence, it wasn't just the other students that I got to know by seeing them regularly, but um, the resident staff as well, including um, hospitality staff, who not only did a really great job of keeping our, re our residences super clean and safe, but they were also super friendly. Would you like to touch on that a little? Uh, sure, I would love to. So I'll first talk about cleaning. Uh, cleaning in traditional style residences like Claudette Miller Hall, CMH, Rev or V1, 
Resident staff will clean common areas daily, such as uh, the kitchen, uh, common lounges, study spaces, and so forth, including grand commons and all of the traditional style residences. For students who want to clean up uh, spaces after their use, there's also shared vacuums, disposable garbage bags, and cleaning supplies for students to use while they're living in traditional style residences. Uh, resident staff are also very friendly, so feel free to say hi to them as well. They really help make sure our environments are clean and tidy and really help maintain uh, the academic support that we find on residents as well. For a suite stall, residences, you are responsible for cleaning up your own suite and for uh, traditional style rooms, you are responsible for cleaning up your own room. But typically you'll find that a lot of the hallways and common spaces are cleaned daily by resident staff. Uh, something I would say students are responsible for uh, while living at residence is to make sure everyone's safe and cleaning up after your own spaces. For instance, while living in Waterloo, there is a possibility of getting COVID. So one of my few tips would be uh, continuous testing for symptoms. If you feel sick, a great way to start to see if you're uh, testing positive is to get a rapid test or sanitized spaces. We also continued the mask mandate on campus, so keeping your mask on is very important. It also ensures the safety of others around you. For maintenance issues, typically if you have a maintenance issue, you can contact uh, UWP maintenance at uwaterloo.ca uh, and maintenance will always answer your queries or issues very promptly. My experience with maintenance involved me breaking a shower nozzle at 3 a.m. in the morning. I don't really have an excuse for why I was up that late, but unfortunately my shower no longer worked for me, my roommate, or my neighbor. So we all went to different uh, bathrooms, but within two to three days uh, the issue was solved and we have a new shower nozzle and I'm very thankful for that. <laughs> um, for front desk staff, Assistants are there 24 seven to help students with any queries or questions or any type of assistance that they might need. Some examples of things that you can get from the front desk involve, involves printing, sending or receiving mail, uh, renting out equipment or games, or just talking with the resident staff as well. If you are interested in resources, residents uh, or front desk staff uh, will always be there to answer your questions as well. Alrighty, so I want to ask about sustainability in residence. So we know many Waterloo students come to campus with a lot of background in recycling initiatives and doing what they can to make a world a greener place. So for students who are maybe concerned that when they live in a residence or apartment style building, uh, this is difficult to do. So are there any programs in our residences um, that are specifically engaged to uh, sustainability? So our renovation and construction projects always put sustainab sustainability in the forefront whenever possible. We also have a zero waste action plan, which campus housing supports the University of Waterloo through. There are also shift zero key areas. Examples of these include engagement and training, reducing and eliminating waste, maximizing recycling, capturing organics, expanding reuse programs, which inevitably inevitably all try to support sustainable initiatives while living on campus and in residence. Some examples of reduce and eliminate initiatives that we've taken in campus housing involved food services, converting our plastic straws to paper straws. We also have eco containers, which you can get a discount on for every time you reuse the box. And we also have log a mug, which essentially you would take a mug of yours to uh, food services outlets or even franchises on campus, and you can get a discount on using your mug as well. We also have default two-sided printing to save paper, uh, water bottle uh, refill stations all across campus and in residence, and A to Z sorting guides, which typically have garbage, organics, recycling, papers and cardboards, and other recycling, which are also found on or found in all of the residences as well. There's a sustainability map, which you can use to see where the closest water bottle refill station is, green bean or recycling bin. 
And we also focus on wastewater diversion. And as of 2020, campus housing managed to divert 1,900 pounds of discarded students' belongings away from the landfill. There's also opportunities to become a green ambassador. So a part of becoming a green ambassador uh, was the program itself was established in 2018 in collaboration with student leadership programs in partnership with students from residents, clubs and societies, student governments and student in off campus housing. Essentially, green ambassadors really help campus housing go green and some initiatives that's already been completed so far include uh, warm clothing donations in uh, CLV or UWP, organic collections in UWP and virtual Earth Hour events. All right, thanks, Katie. Um, so we've heard some really great things today about living in residence. Um, so for students who are interested, what are their next steps? OK, I can answer that. Um, so the next steps would be um, to first off accept your offer from UW. Um, and after that, you will be able to apply for the first year guarantee residence application. Before you do that, we would suggest that you do your research. Uh, we have a ton of information online on our campus housing website and the university colleges do as well. Um, from pricing to the room layouts um, to residence life experiences, it's all there. Um, with your first year guarantee residence application, I'm going to say it again, but if you have any accessibility, accessibility needs, um, please fill it out here. Have your paperwork prepared so that it could all be done for June 1st so that uh, we can help you uh, find the best spot um, according to your needs. Uh, following that first year guarantee residence application that is due June 1st on at 11.59 p.m. Um, you will receive the campus housing preference form. So that campus housing preference form is uh, goes beyond your, the residence community that you want to live in and it's going to tell us uh, which building you want to live in, if it's going to be a traditional style or suite style, and if you have any roommate requests. So once again, most important thing for roommate requests is to make sure that um, both parties or the three parties or the four parties, if, if you're requesting a suite, that everybody has the same names on the application. Then um, it's going to be a waiting game. You'll find out where you're living during allocation week, and then you can make a financial plan um, as to how how you're you're going to uh, pay for residence prior to moving in. So keep checking your emails. Uh, we're constantly in contact. Um, we will update you with everything that you need, including checklists um, for what what you'll need to move into residence. Um, yeah, and, and we'll help you out along the way. Uh, campus housing is here. Residence life is here. Um, we'd like to make it as easy for you as possible and make sure you have everything um, that, that you might require prior to fall 2022. Alrighty, so each week we like to ask our guests if they have any final tips or advice for future Waterloo students. Uh, so starting off with Katie, is there anything you'd like to share with the audience? I would say uh, my one tip for moving into residence is to uh, be prepared. For example, knowing what clubs that you can join, uh, what opportunities are available, for example, living learning communities. It's a great way to socialize with other students. And in order to be more prepared, we also have a packing list for students, which you can look at in order to create a smoother or easier transition into your stay in residence. And my final message would be residence really is a home away from home, and it's a great place to interact with new people, although it might be a little bit intimidating at first. Um, yeah, so Katie made a good point with the living learning communities. It's also something that is included on your first year guarantee residence application form. Um, so you can look into that as well. They are really great places where you will live with people uh, that, that are within your program. Um, there's also like 
there's peer mentors, um, and you might have access to your professors that you wouldn't um, have just like on a regular floor or a regular basis. So they are really great um, opportunities and learning experiences, um, and you don't have to pay any additional fees for it. Um, so something else um, to remind you, campus housing, like we work with students um, to meet your preferences, values, needs, um, whatever you need while living in residence. Um, as a first year student, like I got to experience meeting new friends. I got to explore campus. Um, I also maintained a healthy um, and supportive lifestyle while I was there. Um, meal plans, I know Katie mentioned, are optional when you're living in a suite style residence, but it could be a good idea just to have, um, if you if to get a light one, if um, just to have it on the back burner in case you didn't have time to cook, if you found yourself too busy. Um, Food services is, is there to, is to provide healthy um, and um, healthy meals with fresh. We do uh, local local foods as well. So I think that's everything. I noticed in the questions that a lot of people are asking where to live in reference to like the math faculty or to the engineering faculty. Um, something to remind first year students that are coming in is that. In first year, your your classes could be all across campus. Um, so we we recommend that you look for a residence that best suits your needs, um, rather than um, living somewhere that might be closer to your faculty. Because just like I said, it may be more specialized in one area while you're an upper year student, but in first year, you, it's very likely you'll be all over campus. So it's something to consider. All right, thanks, Christine. Yeah, I um I had classes all over campus, so I was I was walking all over the place and really up until my fourth year. So that's a great point. Um, so I'd like to thank uh, Christine and Katie both. Thank you so much for coming on and doing this. We have some more questions for you in a few moments, um, but we're going to turn to our audience and do some questions for our weekly quiz. So here's how it works. The next slide has three questions for you. In the Q&A box, send us the three correct responses plus your email all in one submission. It's really important that you submit your answers and email all together, so don't hit enter until everything is in there or else we won't be able to contact you. Uh, if you're one of the first two correct responses we receive, we'll send you your very own Waterloo Warriors hoodie. So remember, email and all three answers in one response, okay? All right, so we'll go to the next slide. And your questions are how many resident how many residences does or how many university college residences are there? Sorry, um, true or false residence is guaranteed for first year students. And what is the date to submit your first year residence guarantee application by? And make sure you include your email. So again, how many university colleges residences are there? True or false, residence is guaranteed for first year. And what is the date to submit your first year guarantee residence application by? So we have um, all of our team in the chat going through, looking for your answers. I'll be jealous of whoever wins one of these hoodies because I don't have one. giving it a minute. Oh, and it looks like we have our winners. So um, congratulations. So I think these are the starts of the emails, maybe. Um, oh yeah, okay, sorry. So I'll share the answers first. So the answers are, um, how many university college residents are there? There is four. Um, true or false, residence is guaranteed for first years. The answer is true. Just make sure you submit um, your all of your documents and your deposit by the deadline. And um, what is the date to submit that is June 1st to submit your first year guarantee. Uh, residence application and so it looks like 
bad badala jack i think i'm gonna butcher that um but i think that's the start of an email and cole paventi 2004 i think that hopefully if that's you you get it i'm sorry if i butchered your email um but congratulations you won um a waterloo warriors hoodie and we will reach out to you at those emails oh it's chloe i think it's chloe i might be reading that wrong sorry I don't have my glasses on. Either way, we'll be emailing you to uh, get those hoodies sent out to you. Um, so with that, I'll hand it over to Maggie. Alrighty, congratulations to our two winners for the quizzes. So now we'll be uh, open to Q&A session. So um, we'll be going through a list of questions, um, ones from the Q&A chat, and um, we'll have Christine and Katie answer them. So um, I think the first question that will go was one that was sent in the chat. Um, so just uh, I guess one of the quick question is when will in-person residence tours be running again? Um, so Christine, would you like to answer that? Yeah, we're going to start running in-person residence tours in May. Um, not all of them will be available. However, for you at Waterloo Day, um, uh, at the end of May, the, sa the last Saturday of May, all of our residence buildings will have rooms open that the public can come in and view. Katie might be your tour guide. <laughs> awesome. Thanks, Christine. Sorry, I'm just trying to scroll back to find. I know we had another question um, from the Q&A. Um, the other question that someone was wondering is, do four stream students have the same room for fall and spring terms? Christine, maybe I'll pass that one back to you. Um, yeah, no, they do not. So if you are a four stream student, say you're there um, in the fall term, you would move out completely before the, the Christmas holiday, winter holiday, um, and then you would move back into a new room for the spring term. Alrighty, so we had another question um, in the Q&A and um, I'll pass this to Katie uh, to see if she maybe has a response. Um, so the question was, which residence has the best gym? So Katie, <laughs> do you have an opinion on that? Um, I think it depends on where you live. For example, I live in Claudette Miller Hall, so I guess I can only speak for the gym here. I believe the gyms here are very good. The spaces that are provided and the equipment that's provided are um, really great for students who I guess are frequent gym goers, I guess you could say. Uh, personally, I really love going to Pack or SIF, which are, I guess you could say, the bigger gyms on campus. However, if you're also lazy like me and you don't want to leave your residence, uh, residence gyms and traditional style residences are really good. I've currently been to CMH and Rev also has a gym and they're both really fun to go to. I know that's not an exact answer, but I think they're both great. Thanks, Katie. I lived in Rev uh, and I frequented the, the Rev gym. Um, it's definitely smaller than like our main on campus um, gyms, but it's perfect if you live there. You can use one of those gyms. It's, it's really nice um, to have the option because it's right you know, in the bottom floor of, of your residence. So it's really convenient. Um, Katie, maybe I'll ask you actually another question. Um, is it easy to meet people in residence? Like, what is the, the social experience like? So, personally, I would say it's really easy to eat, uh, meet people in residence. Uh, during your first week of moving in, I believe you'll probably meet almost all or a good amount of your other floor mates or people living within your own building, especially during the first week of coming onto campus and moving in. There's lots of events held by faculties and it's a great opportunity or like a different events held in residence as well. And it's a great opportunity to meet new people and expand your social life here at university. Uh, I personally joined lots of clubs and volunteered for different positions on campus, which uh, led me to meeting a lot of new people, which I really enjoyed. Yeah, 
One downside I would say because of COVID, there are certain restrictions that might impede people from going in and out of residence as well as uh, trying to stay safe while you're here as well. But overall, residence staff and the community here that you can find at residence really helped create a fun and engaging environment during the time that I stayed here for my first term and my second term. Thank you, Katie. Um, so the next question is for Christine. So what happens when you're on co-op? Uh, can you live on residence if you have a local work term? Uh, no, we do not house co-op students. Um, so that would be something that you'd have to look at doing off campus throughout your term. Sublets tend to work a lot with co-ops. Just, just a bit of advice. Yeah, I've definitely found a lot of sublets on all of the different housing pages. Um, so I think another question, um, maybe Christine, I'll send this one back to you. Sorry, I'm just sending them back to the same person, but um, do students typically live in residence for more than one year or are they usually only in first year? Yeah, so we also have um, different spaces for upper year students, um, graduate students, as well as families. Uh, we have one building, Minota Hege, that is just for graduate students. Um, a lot of our families are found at CLV North, um, and graduates can also be found at CLV South, which are really nice townhouses just across the street from campus. Um, a lot of people stay to be Dons, um, but yeah, we do have um, a lot of housing for upper years. Uh, all of that information can be found in our Important Dates website. So if you are thinking of applying to residence as an upper year student, um, just keep an eye out for those dates. It is first come, first serve for upper year students, unlike first year students. Um, so when those applications open, it's best to do it as soon as possible. All right, so there was another question in the Q&A. So there was one specific to um, a building. So I'm, I'm sure, Christine, you'd probably have the best answer for this as well. Um, so is the UWP Beck Hall a double suite? Um, also, how would they be assigned if it can't be ranked? Um, yeah, so I think I, I, I actually answered that question. Um, UWP Beck Hall has two rooms per suite, um, but often because if um, our applications are very high and we have a large number of incoming first year students that year, we will put two people in one suite. So it becomes like a traditional style room within a, within a suite. The rooms are really large. Um, they have huge, beautiful windows, and um, we're actually reconfiguring the rooms um, to, to, to make them, to let them work out better for the students who are living inside. You, for your first year guarantee residence application, what you're going to do is you're going to, that, that's the one where you tell us which residence community you want to live in. So that's either campus housing or the three university colleges. However, for the campus housing preference form, this is where you tell us what buildings you want to live in. So if you think you want to live in Beck Hall, um, you can put that on your campus housing preference form. Um, I should add that those, those, um, double rooms in Beck Hall that do have two people for room, they are the um, most, uh, the, the, the greatest financial option. They are cheapest rooms, um, least expensive rooms, however you want to say it, um, within residence, within campus housing. So Christine, maybe just to piggyback off that a little bit, a question I'm seeing in the chat right now is, um, do the residence choices you put impact whether or not you will be accepted into a living learning community? So could you maybe just clarify on that one? So um, with the learning li living learning community, you're going to tell us if you would like to live in one in your campus housing preference form, or sorry, not your in your first year guarantee residence application. After that, um, you will be contacted by living learning communities and you will um, be sent a living learning community uh, application form. It takes about 15 minutes to fill out and you're going to tell us um, basically if you meet the requirements. So if you are part of that faculty or program and then you're going to tell us um, in short like why you want to live there and um, how your experiences um, will will add to to that living learning community. Um, so living learning communities, the residence buildings are predetermined. Um, so you, you kind of like skip that step telling us where you want to live. Um, 
because it's basically you're you're going towards the living learning community and not a specific building. All right, so um, I think we can do maybe one or two more questions, but um, I'll give this one to Katie if you can try to see if you can answer. Um, but do you think that students typically live in residence for more than one year, or do you find that they tend to move on? <laughs> I would say it really depends on what stream you're in. For example, I know a lot of friends of mine who have stayed here in residence for two terms, but are going to have spring off or are on co-op for spring, so they won't be living in residence. And uh, luckily for some of them, it is a remote co-op, so they get to work at home and don't have to go anywhere. For me personally, I was the exception. I have spring off uh, for I have the spring term off and I've been here since fall and winter, but I decided to stay in Waterloo and stay in residence to pursue a minor as well as some other uh, jobs that I've been applying to so far. So it really depends on what your interests are, uh, how long you want to stay here and what your pursuits are as well. Uh, residence really does offer upper years and um, others like any student who wants to stay here uh, options. So if you are interested in staying residence for longer than your contract, you can always apply for that term as well. Thanks, Katie. Um, so I think maybe we'll do one more question. Um, and Christine, I'm going to send this one to you. I have uh, I've seen in the chat some students asking how does um, Waterloo does Waterloo and how does it support um, co-op students when they're looking for housing? Um, so, okay, sorry. So I guess I made a mistake before, but if you have, if you are a co-op student and you have any questions about um, student housing, please email our inbox at housing at uwaterloo.ca and we'll be able to, to help you out with all your needs. Okay, awesome. Thanks. Um, I would always also just plug uh, the off-campus um, housing group. They have a lot of um, like listings available depending on where you're located as well so if you have a co-op in that in those areas they can be helpful as well um, but yeah definitely reach out to housing at uwaterloo.ca um, with that though i think that kind of wraps up our questions so thank you again for joining us uh, christine and katie um, again take it from maggie and i some of our best memories and strongest connections were made during our times in residence so we highly recommend you consider living on campus as well um, on our The Missing Manual webpage, check out the benefits of living on campus with advice from current students. Um, I hope you've realized by now that residence is more than just a place to sleep at night. Um, so just to plug some upcoming events, our next Waterloo Wednesday webinar will be May 5th and it's a student housing panel. Um, and make sure you order your brochures, explore campus and find articles using the links that are on the screen there. Um, other than that, we hope you'll join us for our final Waterloo Wednesday next week or in a couple weeks. And um, yeah, have a great evening, everyone.